Gonna build a niche, a niche, a nook, a nookie. I did it all for the nichey. I'm gonna plan this to be two foot up. So I'm gonna say this is gonna set right about right here. When I space it, about like that, well, that'll be my line there. I'm gonna build a frame in here for this nook. It's gonna be right here. It's gonna go up one tile height. I'm gonna take off inch and a half for my two by four, a half inch for my backer board, a quarter inch for my tile, and a little bit for the grout. And I want my nook to come from the, the inside corner of the tub. So I want it nice and wide at one foot high. I'm gonna go three inches. Now I'm using a reciprocating saw here to get rid of the studs and then an oscillating tool to clean up the work with anything left over. Also, it's important to note, I've installed a 36 inch wide tub. Your measurements might be a little different. These are not even lines. But when I put this two by four in this way, I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and soft. Now if I want my nook to be as wide as the opening of the tub, I've got 29 and a half inches here. I'm going to add more for both sides of the backer board. Put the two by four that's gonna go in between it and the top and some more. 29 and a half plus both sides, 34 inch. I'm gonna have a half inch backer board, a quarter inch of tile, a little bit of room for some more. If it's not quite level, you can cut a shim like this and put it underneath one of the sides. And then this is where you want to level the stud facing forward so all the water drains out. The center of this nook is going to be 18 inches. Plus a quarter, 20 and a half, 14, three quarters, either way. We have our niche, our nookie. This is a little bit tall, so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably double up the concrete board to match it up. I'm level here, but I'm not level down here with patch. Might not be the fastest way, but when I've got this in, I'm gonna use my sheetrock saw and I'm gonna cut out the opening of my niche. Since I know that I'm going to have another piece in the back, I don't have to put this all the way back there. I want to line it up with the front. That should work nice. That's too high. That's the end top of my nook right there. You don't want to try to smash it in there because all you're going to do is break up the ends. Just shave it down a bit with your rock knife. Right on the other side of that sheetrock is my bedroom wall. That is my bedroom wall. So I don't wanna go poking screws through it. To hold this thing down in the back, I'm gonna use some liquid nails. Cement board. And it's already sloped down away from the wall so that any water runs off. I got this at the local warehouse. It's readily available. It comes right by the Duroc board that I have up on the wall. I'm going to use it to mix in some of this mortar and seal up my joints on the concrete board. Get it nice and peanut buttery, slap it on the wall. As always, you want to put the water in first and then the powder, both for mortar and for grout. And if you can, open up a window and crank a fan on it. Get all those fumes out of there. Just a little bit. You'll see I've already added a second level of concrete board on the top there, but once it's sealed up, you'll never even notice. 
with this sealant, you put a little bit of the mortar in there and then the tape sinks right down into it, getting all the edges firm. A few things I had to get the job done. Aqua Defense, this has gotten at the local warehouse, okay? I think it was a $50 purchase. $50, it's gonna be plenty enough to put two, three coats on this whole shower. And it's $50 to seal up watertight your shower. Boom, three inch disposable cut in paintbrush, rubber gloves because if this stuff gets on your hands, it's never coming off. Nice thick nap, gotta be thick nap because you wanna get in those concrete bits. It's been sitting there for a while, so I wanna make sure it's shake and bake. Who knows how long it's been on the shelf. Five and one. It's like it's good and shook up. My center line marked, and I have my line level where I want it to go all the way across, right here, up to the end. Well, it's not level. I'm gonna fix that, I gotta do it now. Pull this off, I'm gonna back burn at the top a little bit more and start it right. That's good there. It's level. I use the tile stone to help get the edges more factory friendly. And if you've never used one of the leveling systems, that's what these are. The tabs with the wedges and the proprietary pliers that come with it gets rid of all of the lipping. And what you see here in the foreground is an aluminum trim made by Schluter. You can get it any box store and it works really well to trim out your tile. You'll see that I actually use it as the trim phase for the niche as well. The nookie trim. Sometimes you make a mistake and you gotta pull a tile off and that's fine as long as it's wet. Working with mortar can be really messy, so you want to keep a bucket of water nearby and a rag that you can continuously clean up with. When placing a piece of tile over an opening and it might sag, I used a trim piece from the tile that was the same height that I wanted for my niche, and I put a couple of the tile tabs in between to cushion it and make it level. And I found that once the tile leveling system was cranked oh, down, it held it in place really well. I decided to put the tile in the back of the niche, the opposite direction as the rest of the wall. It gave it a little bit of an accent and we find it looks pretty good. Now this Schluter trim can be cut right on your miter saw with a finish blade of 60 teeth. I tried at first to cut it with a metal blade and all, all it did was melt it and it became a mess. So the finish blade worked perfect. I cut it, I brought it in, I checked it, I trimmed it more, I brought it in, I checked it, I trimmed it until it fit the way I wanted it to fit. So I'll be able to set that in. Miter's in there pretty good. Just wanna make sure those corners are pushed back in because it is sharp stuff. And if you leave that sticking out, you'll catch it. And you'll cut yourself pretty good. All right, happy with that. All right, I'm gonna float all of this, lay the bottom pieces of tile and make sure that they're at an angle. And then I'll cut these side ones a little bit at an angle to match. And then I'll have something, because I'm going to put some more mortar on the top here. So I'm going to have to have something to rest it on to wedge it in. And we decided we didn't want to put the same glass accent in the back, because it would have taken away from the accent that's on the wall. Leave a comment below if you would have done something different as an accent in the back of the nook. A 
little bit extra on the back side there so that it keeps it, the angle up. My line right in my center here. There's not enough on it. I don't want my aisle to sink below this trim because I want water to be able to run right off. So that means I gotta float this thing here a little bit more than I thought. A little more up here, still, put it right on my line, drop it in. That is more like it, now we're happy. Guys, if you're getting something out of this, smash that like button, hit subscribe, it's really helpful, and share it with a homeowner. size and the top end, I'm gonna have to let it set up a bit. With all that wet mortar in there behind that schluter trim, it's a fun word to say, schluter. You wanna tape it up so it doesn't push it out away from the wall. Just trying to drip through this thing. Now I think it's fitting that I've saved this nook for last because it's the thing in this entire shower that's taken up more of my brain space and how do I put it in, what I want to trim it with, and how big do I want it? Does it have to be exactly the size of one tile? For me, yes. So it's fitting that I finish this tile job on the nook and cranny. That is gonna feel rewarding. I did set the back pieces in earlier today, and because I needed this to uh, lip over the top of this trim just a little bit, I had to float some in there. I didn't want to mess around with it, so I let it dry in there. I've got to put in the sides and the top, and then we will call this shower tiled, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I have to say, it's taken a lot longer to do this bathroom than my hall bathroom. There's more to this one. It's more space. We went all the way to the ceiling instead of just seven or eight, uh, seven and a half feet high. Plus the hall bathroom, I didn't have this nook, so I had to plan that out, cut this all out. Um, and in this one also, I had that additional top spout that I had to cut around for. Plus, actually a lot of time was spent on the accent that goes across both building it and making it uh, set up by itself out in the garage and then putting it in in one piece and then fixing the pieces that didn't quite stick. But I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Wife loves it. I think it's a beautiful accent to the whole shower and it's gonna look really nice in there on the daily. What I've got left is to make the top look like the bottom. I'm gonna put the tops in right now which I have this piece cut. I'm gonna mark my center line. 11 and 31, 30 seconds. It's a little tight, I'm gonna have to trim that side. Probably take that out for now. These one foot wood shims are really helpful for keeping the piece in place. Cut really easy with some shears. A little more on this side, but on that side. Like this, the corner is not quite where it should be, but I think that's gonna get covered up nicely with grout. Now it will be happy. Oh yeah. That's pretty exciting. That is the last piece of tile that goes in this bathtub and I'm fired up. I used a grout removal tool right here to clean out any of the protruding mortar left and the 501 is helpful. And of course, a tile sponge to clean it up, get it ready for the grout. So what I'm using, we're going with the frost color here to match the tile as best we can. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water in the bucket first. Put about half of this bag in there.
Just gonna spread this on the float to see how we're doing. And it looks pretty good. It's about the consistency that I'm gonna want. Not a lot of bumps in there. We're ready for the wall. We're dealing with this Schluter trim. Just like any other piece of tile, you wanna really get that grout in there, rub it in there, smash it around. And what I didn't show here is you obviously wanna use some fresh water and a sponge and get it all clean. Outside of the accent, I'm super excited to figure out how this nook looks. How's the nookie looky? For the final process, you obviously wanna buff it out with a microfiber or a terry cloth or a jersey sheet as you see me do here. Thanks for joining me on this Nookie build. If you like it, smash that like button, consider subscribing, share with some people you think no one loved this stuff, and we'll see you next time on Cool Hand Ryan. Hit that subscribe button right there. Come on, what are you doing? Hit it. We'll watch another video, that recommended video right there. Click that one.